Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rook along with Brian Doherty, Total Farm Marketing. We close mostly higher except for corn futures today. And Brian, let's talk about soybeans leading the charge. There's some new highs for the move. We had quite a few fundamentals pushing it, but it looked like we were getting a push from the soybean meal market today. It does. And and everything's sort of a guess when you're trying to figure demand. But there's a lot of talk that China's fairly well covered into December on on bean purchases. But as you move into the January time window, window the talk is that they're only about 40 percent covered on needs. And when you look at soybean meal prices in China at record levels and talk that Argentine producers may sell beans directly to China rather than crush them, you're going to likely see the soybean meal market lead the charge higher. And that's what we saw. We saw meal higher, oil lower, maybe some spread trading there. But it looks like the meal market is well supported. Keep in mind that until we see changes on USDA reports, if we see them, both domestic and world supplies remain sort of in what I'd call that critically tight zone. Plus, they are behind in planting and they have had some very dry conditions. Those are expected for the next couple of weeks. So we're putting in a little weather premium, too, aren't we? Well, we are. And you can see the market started to move up here this past week when energies rebounded. But also, I think the weather premium is starting to come into the market. Once you kind of get past that Thanksgiving window, the market really has a focus somewhere and it really starts to focus on the supply potential out of the southern hemisphere. And so my point is, once you cross that December 1st window, the weather really starts to have impact and matter and could affect ending yield and consequently production. And then once you move into the middle of the month, then all bets are off. It's all weather from that point onward. So if this La Nina pattern were to surface again, much like last year, just remember how quickly things dried out in December and into January, and consequently a uh, decline in the overall production of soybeans out of South America. So is that what we need to get us over $15 in soybeans or are there enough other fundamentals to get us over that mark? Well, the fundamentals are there. I think what you need is the money flow there or the short cover. Or you need something to kind of get that momentum moving where the you know, speculator is saying, hey, look, yeah, I'm willing to buy beans at 1490 because I think they're going to 1550 or something like that. And what we've seen recently, and we actually saw that here again with today's higher market, but during the day we get big pop and then prices sell off right away. So the idea is that it's still a trader's market. The traders will sell the rallies. But once you start talking about something that can fundamentally a affect supply. If if that starts to creep into the marketplace, then that's where you get your money pushed back into, I think, the bigger dollars coming in and more of the buy, hold, macroeconomic prices could move higher on Southern Hemisphere weather. Well, one market that has seen a lot of money exit and the funds have gone short now is the wheat market, but we popped today. Was that just end of the month short covering and do we build on that at all? You know, the wheat's a finicky market. It's it's produced in every major country in the world. It's exported every every month of the year. It's 12 months out of the year. The U.S. produces about 10%. So it's just not about the U.S., but the U.S. is not a very good rated winter wheat crop by any stretch. Uh, and then you start talking about Argentina. You've got the wheat market price below war level, uh, uh, before the war at price levels. So there's probably limited downside. So I think the speculative money that's been short, they've been able to be short and continue to sell short because everybody wants to think the market has to go higher, but you're not seeing anybody step up, so they add to short positions. So there's a kind of a couple of new add-ons shorts. One is adding new shorts, that's a new selling. And then people who bought the market, they get their sell stops triggered. So that's what pressures a market sometimes. You get those, what might've been a month ago, unintended sales. They're coming into play. It leaves the market in a vulnerable spot so that it could quickly V bottom out of this. And I've got to continue to point to the world supplies, the war in Ukraine. I don't think this is a comfort zone for wheat prices down here. This is where end users should be covering themselves. But corn was not able to follow soybeans and wheat. So what was that about? Corn is complacent. Some days you don't know what it's about. I, yeah. I would have thought with energies up, wheat up, soybeans up, why in the world isn't corn up? And consequently, it just it just didn't have enough gusto at the end. It was up earlier in the day. Um, I do wonder if farmer selling hasn't picked up a little bit. As one farmer told me, he said, you know, I'm kind of over my harvest hangover. We've got everything put away, equipment cleaned up, and I'm starting to look at things. And he said, I sold corn today because I, I just came to the conclusion maybe I was getting a little too greedy and it doesn't have upward momentum. So you got to wonder if one isn't doing that, if maybe there's a few thousand doing that, and maybe that's enough. The okay. ethanol number wasn't great today. Uh, maybe that had something to do with it, but 
corn, suffice it to say, is still very range bound. The bulls will argue that, hey, wheat prices dropped a buck and a half, corn dropped 30 cents. What's yeah. the big deal? Corn can't go down when wheat goes down. And they're going to stick with that argument. Now, the bears will say, hey, look, we just don't have that bullish news. We're not seeing the export sales. China's not coming in and buying. That's our biggest concern is perceptively we're going to have to see downgrades to exports. I think that's a little early yet in the season. China could come in a very big way, especially if they don't have needs covered or whether in South America becomes a factor. Yeah, and the funds have exited a lot of their long position in the corn. So the fact that we're still range bound, I think, is kind of a victory here. Uh, let's talk about the cattle market. We had some 155 cash trade. That market has made contract highs. You and I talked about that last week, and it's kind of consolidated under those levels. Is this just kind of part of the process before the next leg up or what? It's part of the process, though, but the red flag is that packer margins are in the red. So okay. the packers may be sort of tepid to chase this market if they're not seeing cutout values fly higher, and they were off again today. We saw choice cuts down, I think it was over $2. And so... At the same time, last year, Packers were making significant money. So with that being said, it's still a beautiful textbook uptrend. It just uh, higher highs, uh, higher lows, keeps moving up, gets to a new high, sets back a little bit. I think you have to stick with the overall supportive idea that supplies will continually be on the decline due to two and three years worth of drought out west, cow herd reduction, increased heifers in the slaughter mix. We're going to get to a point somewhere down the road where you got to wonder if Packers aren't going to start cutting back on kill times just because supply numbers are, are going to be lower. Um, I think, uh, what did I write down here? If I did, I think, yeah, today's uh, slaughter 257, or week to date, 257,000 okay. uh, versus 245. So we're slaughtering more this week at higher prices. But again, some of those are the cow and heifers that went into this mix that are not going to replenish that herd. So the big macro picture continues to suggest steady or higher and little downside potential unless demand just goes you know, way to the wayside. But that doesn't seem likely either. All right. Always great to talk to you. Thanks so much, Brian Doherty with Total Farm Marketing. That's Markets Now.